Hello, it is Friday, December 15th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday crossword today, which means we're going to have a themeless crossword. A, uh, a themeless, possibly punny, possibly tricky, possibly slightly misdirecting um, set of clues. And this possibly punny, possibly tricky, possibly slightly misdirecting edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Casey Brandt, Michael Jake Rodkin, and as always, the indomitable showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, and that means they help directly support this channel and sustain this series. And for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the channel at any level. I really do appreciate it because it does keep this whole thing going. And if you'd like to support the channel in that manner, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field where you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons. And that includes the most recent monthly bonus solve from the New York Times, which is, what was it this month? It was some, uh, yet another truly ludicrous and tenuous holiday. Um, uh, it was Make a Gift Day, Make a Gift Day, apparently celebrated on December 3rd of each year. I could find even less about this supposed holiday than most of the <laughs> supposed holidays that are celebrated in these monthly bonus puzzles. Anyway, um, you can uh, receive a gift that I've made for you if you're a patron um, by watching the Make a Gift Day crossword in the Patreon campaign. All right. Thanks again to all the patrons. Thanks also if you've subscribed to the channel on YouTube, liked the videos, or left a comment. Those are all helpful. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server, a nice friendly chat community, which can also be joined via the description field. All right. Let's get on to the puzzle. This is yet another um, uh, another debut construction. We had one of those yesterday, I, I believe. I think it was yesterday. And uh, we've had quite a few recently. So here's another from Alex Tomlinson. And the puzzle, of course, was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It'll be themeless, and uh, let's start solving. Yard nautically. Right. Not sure, actually. Desire for a ski jumper. Big air, something like that. Something maybe it ends with air. I just want to see if I think that if I think that is going to work. Arctic native. Arctic native, not sure. Spec, iota, just a, a tiny speck of something, an iota. Handmade good site, nope, this is the classic Etsy, so this is all wrong. Okay, handmade good site is Etsy, online retail, uh, online sort of uh, marketplace. And then desire for a ski jumper, airtime maybe? No, that's not long enough. I don't know. Although I do see this. Where, what was the one that I just saw here? Blank blue dot earth in a famous photograph. Pale blue dot is a you know, famous photograph of earth from, from taken from space. And then word after life or sea. Sea span, lifespan. There we go. Lifespan and C-span. C-span is a cable television network in the United States that... Um, uh, shows political uh, footage, including footage of Congress itself. All right. Yard nautically. I don't know. Since, since that's true, as that's true, since that date, as of that date, there we go. Okay. So I had to just, and again, I, I, I often mention this, but it is incredibly useful. Uh, these clues, most of the time, uh, most clues will be direct synonyms of their answers, which means you should be able to swap the word into a sentence and it will maintain the part of speech and the tense and so on. So you should, be, and, but of course, words can have different, you know, several definitions or several senses. So it can be useful to kind of run through some of them in your head and try to put them in a sentence to see if you can replace it with another word or phrase that might fit. Uh, it's often, I mean, I, I would, if I was suffering alone, I would do that quietly in my own to myself, but uh, reading them aloud can honestly be even more helpful if, you, if you're willing to do it, just because it, um, I don't know, it kind of forces you to think about what the other possibilities might be. Anyway, one you might beseech to get glasses, 
a ref, right? Okay, so a referee in a game, you might you might berate them and say, "Get some glasses, ref. Bad call." Yard nautically. Oh, spar. That's a nautical term. Is that a yard? A spar? Maybe. One whose work might be a piece of cake, a pastry chef. There we go. And so I think it probably is a spar. So then bit of attire, seldom worn with a jacket. Um, I have no idea what this one is. What about this? General term in a series, nth. Right? So you could have first, second, third, dot, 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 nth. Oh, aloha. An aloha shirt. Right. Okay. Bit of attire, seldom worn with a jacket, aloha shirt. I, I suppose, but I think in formal, I think in formal settings, in you know Hawaiian dress, I think it actually is it uncommon to. I think I think I have seen people formally wearing an aloha shirt with a jacket. I could be wrong about that. Anyway, one way to travel the wor- world by sea would be one way. Blank Juniors, soccer team for which Diego Maradona once played. Oh, I have no idea. Do not know. Earth-based pigment. Ochre. There we go. What one might look at the night sky with. I don't know, but it's a it's a it's gonna be a kind of showcase answer for the puzzle. I mean it won't be relevant to a theme, but It's going to be the longest, uh, one of two equally long, longest answers in the grid. I don't know. I'm wondering if it's, if it's, I mean, you read the clue and it looks like it's about a kind of a telescope or some other piece of equipment. But my suspicion, especially given the length of the answer, is that it's actually going to be more of a, more of a, something conceptual or, or a sort of state of mind. What one might look at the night sky with, something like, you know, open-mindedness or so. I, I don't know, something like that, but I, I can't think what it is. Oh, here we go. Aer Lingus, that's a, an Irish airline. And then Boca, Boca Juniors, maybe soccer team for which like, like Boca Raton, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm Boca. I mean, there's going to be a number of Bocas and I don't know which one this would be, but I just suspect that could be the answer, but I'm not going to put it in yet. Lurch. So this could be you left someone in the lurch, or it could be you're kind of lurching something along, maybe. This is interesting. A.E. What stubbles may become beards? Oh, sorry. I I misspelled ochre. I spelled it in, I guess, what would be the sort of British English way. Uh, What stubbles may become... Yeah, it is beard. It is beards. That does work if you change this. Okay, great. I, that's that'll be the answer. Stubble, the stubbles may become beards, which has has happened in real time um, in uh, videos of me on this channel at times. One in a million, so to speak, a rare gem. There we go. Lurch. Oh, it's a it's a third sense of lurch to kind of lurch along to to reel. You know, you could be if you're sort of drunk, you're lurching from side to side, you're reeling. There we go. Oh, this looks like child, childlike. Oh, what one might look at the night sky, you might look at it with childlike wonder. There we go. Okay, it is. It was sort of a state of mind. There we go. Great. I was on the right track with my suspicion. Why did I think that? Like, I I guess it just seemed like. The kind of thing, especially on a Friday, it just seemed like the kind of misdirection that might be likely. And because it was fairly long, I I don't know, I didn't think it was going to be a sort of incredibly long specific piece of equipment or anything. Uh, But there we go. It worked out. Housework? Question mark. Laws? As in the house, maybe the House of Representatives in the U.S. legislature? Maybe work of the House would be passing laws. Let's see if that works with the crosses. Badge holder? That I don't have a good idea offhand. Pronoun functioning as an object, not a subject. Pronoun functioning as an object, not a subject. Well, it could be whom, because you could say, uh, to whom am I speaking? Because the, the whom there is the is not the subject, not the person doing the speaking, but rather the person the who is the target of the speaking, the object of it. So 
and I think the I think the sort of point of the exclamation mark here is to it's to really emphasize. Well, obviously, it's to emphasize the not a subject bit, but I think it's even on a, on a larger kind of meta level. It's kind of referencing the fact this is a frequently uh, misconstrued distinction between who and whom. But there we go. Okay, there or thereabouts ish. You could say, oh, he was, you know, twenty ish or something. Badge holder. A, oh, a sash. Right. You could wear a sash that has a badge that demonstrates some kind of award or. or Distinction. Term for an overly commercialized celebration. Something holiday? Oh, Hallmark holiday. That is, that is a, 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 I'm basically aware of this as a concept. I'm trying to think if I've heard that exact phrase said in that way, but I, but I understand what it's getting at. The idea of a heavily, um, something, Hallmark, I think there are Hallmark, right, no, I have heard this in the context of Days that people say have been essentially created by the Hallmark Corporation in order to sell uh, greeting cards, or, or if not literally created, in some cases, promoted far beyond what their kind of importance would otherwise be. Okay, likely hyper hyperbole from a texter. Uh, I don't know. Canopy topper. Canopy, you gave a little hors d'oeuvre or something. What would what would you top it with? I'm not sure. Warning letters with a Reddit link. Right, this comes up sometimes. This is a good one to remember. NSFW, not safe for work. Um, I don't know if that's particularly common on Reddit or what, but, uh, but it could apply to any website, I suppose. And so there we have it. Pretty sure that's right. Likely hyperbole from texture. Does that help me with this? I don't know why I can't see this. It'll, so from a texture, it's probably an abbreviation of some kind. Oh, I see what it is. R-O-F-L, rolling on the floor laughing. Yes, likely hyperbole. These people are probably not actually doing that. Uh, canopy topper row. There we go. Um, you know, so caviar would be fish, would be what, sturgeon row, I guess. Um, but you could have other row, salmon row or something. Lines from a wrapper in slang could be bars. Yes, they could be spitting bars. And one on the Israelites' journey to the promised land. One on the Israelites' journey to the promised land. I'm not sure if this is going to be a specific, you know, for instance, a name, a specific name, or if it's going to be a kind of category of thing, several of which were encountered. I'm not sure. I'm going to skip it. Number in a count. Oh, balls in baseball. Amazing to me that I've jumped to this, if this is in fact the answer, because... It's far from my kind of typical unit, but I just weirdly happened to hear about a baseball player in, of all things, listening to the news in French, I uh, heard about a Japanese baseball player who's incredibly uh, successful at playing in the MLB at the moment. And anyway, this was part of the, the coverage. Uh, the idea of, a, of pitching the full count. Anyway, lo to lose tautness would be to sag. There we go. And one on the Israelites' journey, the promised. Oh, Caleb, that sounds that sounds familiar. Classic airplane snack. Salt peanuts. No. Salt pretzels. Salt surely. Classic airplane snack. Salt. Nuts. There we go. That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. At one time, at any one time, roughly 10,000 trillion of them roam the earth. Ants? I have no idea if that's correct. One, 10,000 trillion. That's, that is an inconceivable number. Uh, but yeah, ants seems right. Given how many of, the, of them there are to every one human. I'm going to try it and just see. Desire for a ski jumper. Oh, hang time. That's what it is. That's what that's called. That's what I was basically looking for before when I was thinking about air. Okay, Bill concerned with science communication. Bill Nye, the science educator. And a tele, you know, television science figure personality. To become barren would be to go dry. There we go. Uh, riverbed, for instance. Synchronize with would be 
attuned to or something. Arctic native. Why do I still not see what this is? It's not Inuit, obviously. Spec, oh, a moat, other than a moat of dust. Change as a lock to rekey a lock. Oh, in Inuk, maybe? That sounds that sounds familiar. Is this does that help with this? Knock it off in question form. Can you not? There we go. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so what did we fill? Oh, this was Caleb. We filled that in. That was my suspicion, but you know, not some, not because I knew it very well, but just it sort of sounded vaguely familiar. Synchronize with tune two. I think that's probably right. And then journalism initials since 1851, NYT, New York Times. That sounds plausible that the New York Times newspaper would have been founded in that year. Uh, so milk option would be oat milk. There we go. Don't even think of coming back and stay out. There we go. I think that's right. Nephilist. Right. Okay. Is this referring to the Nephilim? What are we looking for here? Equipment in hockey, lacrosse, and pickleball. A net, I suppose. You get the, the puck or ball into the net. I didn't know pickleball had that, but fair enough. Uh, trick question, e.g., is a... I don't know. True question, E.G. What is that an example of? I'm not sure. What about this one? Nef oh, no, we looked at that just now. What about this one? Spanish geographical word that is an anagram of its English translation. Right. Interesting. Uh, not sure. Not sure. Part of a biblical plague, a locust. There we go. So does that help me with this? Uh... I don't know. I just can't think. Sorry. 2022 Jordan Peele film. Nope. That was a great film. So what about this? It's going to seem so obvious when in retrospect, but I just can't think what it is right now. Can't, I'm trying to work backwards to, the, to an English geographical word. As it's like Costa or something. I was trying to think of a geographical formation. This would be, oh, oh, it is, it is. It's a coast, Costa Coast, of course. There we go, great, okay, good. Glad we can move on from that. Trick question is a trap, maybe. There we have it. And then give me five up top, you might say, to encourage a high five. So have we looked at this yet? Woohoo, an online shorthand. Oh, FTW, for the win. That feels slightly dated to me at this point, but there we go, for the win. Actress Malik. Not sure off the top of my head. What about this one? Half full. Not sure. And here, dig in, everyone. Let's eat. There we go. That's straightforward, at least. So half full. I still don't know that. Tropical vine. A liana. Um, I think that's right. Let's look at the crosses and see, though. Tropical vine. Tibetan title. Yes, llama. Um, you know, the Dalai Lama being the most famous, of course, but... Um, not exclusively. Experimental composer Char ah, Charles Ives um, was an American 20th century composer. Really interesting person and composer. Supports um, AIDS. You aid someone, you support them maybe? Bookie. Question mark though. An avid reader, right, okay. So the word bookie refers to a bookmaker, someone who takes odds, you know, who takes bets. But uh, the question mark suggests it's not actually going to be referring to that. And so instead, you read it in a punny way. And this one is, is to be read as someone who likes books, so an avid reader. What about this? Actress Malik. Wanda? I don't, I don't know. I still don't recognize the name. West Coast NFLer. So... Do I know who these are? Oh, I, I do know. L.A. Ram, the, the L.A. Rams. There we go. So an, an individual, one of those players would be an L.A. Ram. What about this? Half full. Oh, L's. Right. Okay. That's clever. Half of the word full is simply L's, the letter L. So there we go. We've, we're spelling out L phonetically to L's and then that's, that's that. Actress, maybe Wendy spelled with an I-E. I don't know. It still doesn't look familiar. Oh, but this could be 
assembly, occasion to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, so at a, at a, at a sort of U.S. elementary school, you can have an assembly of students. And then actress Malik, when, this is Wendy, surely. Bad press say media... Um, bad press, media, I don't know. Fade away would be to ebb, so to recede. And then media, here we have set, say, to set sail, to uh, you know, launch a ship. And then, oh, media bias, bad press, I see. Bad from your perspective would be bias against you. And then hands out would be meets out, so doles out, hands out. And then work from as a desk would be to sit up, but you could also stand at a desk. And then to damage the reputation of someone would be to tar their reputation. Purple yam is a Hawaiian crop, there we go. Um, blank bottles, popular gummy candy. I don't know. Event at high noon, a duel could be held at high noon for dramatic effect, I suppose. And then, but is that, I've never really thought about why that is. Is that just because it's just a sort of straightforward, memorable time? Does it, does it have something to do with the shadows and you don't want to sort of, because the shadows would be at their kind of least visible. So would, would that be an issue in sort of, I don't know, I'm just thinking here. I have no idea if this has any relevance at all, kind of avoiding shadows giving your opponent a hint as to when you're starting to, to move because maybe they'd see the, the shadow. I don't know. I have no idea. It's probably nothing. It's probably just generally dramatic. Okay. Anyway, public health organization, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, button usually held down by a pinky would be the control key on a keyboard. Common place to see Santa at a shopping mall, I suppose. And then cola bottles, I guess. So, sorry, what was this again? Nephilus T. Oh, oh, I spelled up top wrong. Sorry. I've been doing that a lot recently, haven't I? I think I said up top. So a teetotaler. Oh, is a Nephilus a teetotaler? Someone who, who's completely, you know, doesn't drink at all. Doesn't drink alcohol, obviously, that is. Uh, so teetotaler and then cola bottles, popular gummy candy. That, candy, that must be right. So there we go. That's it. <laughs> certainly felt trickier than yesterday's puzzle, and it was a Friday, so it's meant to. And uh, we solved it with an air of childlike wonder. What was this one again? Oh, right, the Hallmark holiday. Right, okay. Um, so two very different, <laughs> two very different uh, emotionally opposite kind of concepts. We had a sort of wide-eyed uh, naivete and um, kind of openness to newness and astonishment. And then here we have something evoking a bit of cynicism and uh, cynicism and commercialism. And uh, there we go. Uh, nice, nice little uh, cross there evoking a very wide emotional spectrum. Um, fitting for a themeless puzzle when we, we uh, are just, when anything goes. And we had all kinds of things in this grid, actually, because we, I mean, you know, we had some pretty specific cultural knowledge with people like Charles Ives and then religious knowledge like Caleb on the journey to the promised land. But then we had uh, modern kind of slangy formations like can you not and uh, sports things like hang time and uh, the um, uh, some baseball things as well. Oh, and then LA Rams. So yeah, all kinds of things all over this puzzle. Nautical knowledge, spar. <laughs> so yeah, very wide ranging. I enjoyed that. Um, I thought it was just tricky enough for a Friday, um, but full of all kinds of different uh, different bits of subject matter. And actually, you know what? That Speaking of trickiness, um, I am going to, I'm not going to, I forgot to actually set aside comments on clues from yesterday's puzzle, but one of the things that was commented on yesterday by several people was the nature of the theme. And so I did want to read some comments about that. So here, the first person to comment on it was Skiff, who said, the way I interpret the theme is that if you're on mute, there's no talk, chat, or speak. So if you remove those, the word that's left is the answer to the clue. And I think that is that is a very simple way to interpret the clue, sorry, the theme, 
And I think that is probably correct. Um, and then Time Gentleman responds with respect to the misunderstandings bit, which is where my confusion really came in. I think the misunderstanding referred to is that for these answers to be correct, the speech synonym is silent. If one were to read them out fully, they would misunderstand what the answer was. Someone being on mute in a Zoom meeting would be a reason for someone's speech being silent. Hence, you're on mute, the, the, mute, the speech is silent. And I think that's right as well. I think the thing that I got kept getting caught up on is that I was trying to imagine a theoretical Zoom meeting in which this confusion could occur but for various reasons, including the fact that the syllables were actually pronounced in different ways, and you know, just for, for various reasons, it, it didn't make sense to me in that context. I think, as was suggested there, the misunderstanding was not the one that would literally take place in that Zoom meeting. It was the misunderstanding between the clue and the answer as depicted in the puzzle. So anyway, I think as I often do, I was over trying to overcomplicate the theme, and I think these comments have revealed a slightly more straightforward and simple way to um, to interpret it. So that was that. I wanted to make sure that I got those got those read out. And uh, and there we have it. That was the Friday crossword. That was the Friday video. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, with a Saturday crossword, another tricky, themeless puzzle, perhaps. And join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Uh -huh.